All right, so why am I making this video? You clicked on this, you're like, dude, what is this? So let me just explain real quick and then we'll get into this a little bit. I've had so many real estate agents reach out over the past five, six, seven years since I've been coaching real estate agents that have a different worldview than, than what I have when it comes to how to build a real estate business, which is totally fine, by the way. That's the reason why I'm making this video. And so what I was hoping to do was share with you the reasons why we wouldn't be a good fit to work together. That way, you know, you could just know right now, like, dude, this guy just isn't my guy. You know, this is just isn't my coach. This isn't the guy that I'm going to learn from, which is totally fine. And the reason I'm making this video, because unless our values align, I think one thing that both you and I would agree on, and hopefully you can appreciate, is the transparency that I'm going to give you in today's video. So that after you watch this video, it'll be super clear whether I'm the type of person that you want to listen to. If I'm the type of person that you potentially want to work with in a coach-player relationship or not. Because after this video, you'll know whether or not uh, potentially it would make sense for us to have a conversation about working together or not. We could save each other a lot of time. And, And I'm not saying that because I don't love hearing from you guys. It's not because I don't love having conversations with with all of you that maybe potentially uh, are looking into coaching or training, that's great. I want to continue to have those conversations. I'm making this so that the person uh, potentially thinking about getting into coaching can watch this video up front and know right away without wasting any of their time if I'm the type of coach that they want to work with. So I'm going to jump right into this. So number one, I'm not your coach if you don't value accountability. That's the basis of what I believe in. And the thing is, we're in an industry in real estate where I believe that most, a lot of people got into the industry because of the mindset that they want to be their own boss. They want to work for themselves. Totally get it. It's why I got it into the business too. I love it. However, I think there's something th- there's something that we're missing. You see, when we all worked for somebody else, we actually, for most of us, if we're being honest, we showed up for other people better, more than we do for ourselves. Let me explain. A lot of people that quit their full-time job to go full-time in real estate, well, when we looked at their actions and behaviors when they were a full-time W-2 employee... They showed up on time every day. No excuses. They were there. They gave their best effort. In, in many cases, they did more than what their employer was asking for. And that employer got the best version out of them. Why? Because it was in exchange for a paycheck. What happens when we leave that world of accountability and we get into working for ourselves when there is no accountability, the sad, sad truth is that we rarely show up for ourselves on a consistent basis. Although the whole time we were working for somebody else, we kept saying to ourselves, well, I want to work for myself. And the very moment you work for yourself, without having accountability, you rarely show up for yourself. It's crazy. So I can't coach you if you don't have high, if you don't place accountability in high value. And here's the other key thing I'll tell you before I go to the next point is what we know about people that succeed in real estate sales are is that the ones that have a higher level of accountability are always, not sometimes, always the ones that are the top producers. In other words, think about this for a second. Look at any top producer that you know or that you see or hear from or whatever and you just trace it back to, okay, what is their level of accountability? It's a it's a direct correlation that their level of accountability is higher than the lowest producer that you know. Look at that discrepancy. So the person that I like to work with says to me, I want to be held accountable because Brandon, I agree with you. 
I know that if I'm left on my own and I've proven it to myself time and time again, that I won't do the things necessary that I know I must in order to achieve the goals that I've set. Number two, not coachable. So being coachable to me means you do what I ask you to do because you believe it's in your best interest to do it. I have worked with agents that are not coachable and I just, I I can't do it anymore because what I don't have the energy to do is to get into debates around having conversations with agents when they want to, when I, when I teach them a tactic or strategy, they want to defend why it won't work for them. They're looking for reasons why this isn't going to work for me or my market or this, that, the other thing, or why would I do it that way? Well, and I say, well, time out for a second. Like how many homes do you sell? How much money do you make? If you are not making the money that you want or selling the, the amount of homes, is it reasonable that the way you do it and the way that you believe it should be done isn't right? I mean, is that reasonable or is that totally off the rails craziness? To me, I believe it's reasonable to take advice and coaching from people that are doing better than me. That is why I have three coaches at all times. And so if you aren't coachable, if you get into a relationship with me and you're not willing to do what I ask you to do because it's in your best interest, I'm not your coach. There's a lot of other coaches for you that aren't worried about uh, you being coachable. They just want the money. Okay, number three, not willing to push beyond your comfort zone. Here's the thing. We all know this. It's common sense that if we're going to grow, if we're going to become better, that we have to push ourselves out of our comfort zone. Everybody knows that. Everybody's willing to say that. Very few are willing to do it. And specifically, when I coach an agent, I ask them to do their daily prospecting on camera. Why? Because it brings visibility and accountability into a world in real estate where there is no visibility or accountability. This is very uncomfortable. Not only am I asking them to do prospecting activities that they're already uncomfortable doing as they start and begin growing their their business, but I want them to be public when they do it. So inside of our Facebook community, that is what our people do. Uh, I ask them to role play and practice on a daily basis, which for a lot of people, it's like, oh man, that's just so uncomfortable. I know that's the point. The more uncomfortable I can get you as your coach, the more comfortable you will be in the game. Do you get it? The other thing is I ask everyone I coach to get their listing presentation on camera. Why? We need game film. I can't help you become a world-class presenter and create a compelling presentation where a seller signs a contract, not knowing what you're saying, how, you, how you're saying it, your delivery. I don't know any of that. So we're going to ask you to put your presentation on camera. A lot of people aren't willing to do that. That's fine. There's tons of coaches out there that will never ask you to put your listing presentation on camera. There's tons. Don't worry. Uh, 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 don't worry. There's a lot of those. But for me, I have to. I have to have game film in order to coach you at the highest level. All right. Next is can't handle direct feedback. It, I believe that it's. I owe it to you as your coach to give you feedback because feedback is a gift. That is what we believe. Feedback only comes from people that care about you. Think about that. Let that set in. Rewind and watch that again if you have to. People that don't really actually care about you aren't going to confront you. They're not going to give you feedback because they don't want to deal with the confrontation themselves. So agents that just can't handle the feedback or get defensive and want to justify, I am not the coach for you. There are so many people out there that refuse to give you feedback, refuse to be honest with you, refuse to confront you. I mean, there's more than those than than not. And so if you just don't want to be told the absolute truth, 
without worrying about hurting your feelings, I am not the coach for you. And I don't know why my screen keeps doing that. But number five is uh, not willing to accept that you are a salesperson first. So many agents in our business want to they have this grandiose vision of being this marketer and this this branding person and you know being on a TV show or being a celebrity, you know, all these different things that are not being a salesperson first. I believe real estate, listen closely, is a direct outbound sales business, all four. That is what I believe. If you believe that, great. We might make sense. It might make sense for us to have a conversation. If you don't, if you don't believe that real estate agents, like the little license that you have in your wallet right now, if you pull it out, it says real estate salesperson. If you look at that and you say, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I just want to focus on becoming a celebrity. And I believe I'm building my brand first because before becoming a salesperson. In other words, all the sales activities that have been proven to work and get great results. I don't want to hear that. I want to hear about becoming famous. I want to talk about how do I look good on Instagram. I want to learn how to build a brand first. I'm not saying those things aren't important. I'm talking about first, highest priority. Believe me when I tell you, most of the coaches out there will teach you all that. They would love to teach you social media. Why? Because there is no KPIs on whether or not it's working. So therefore, there's no accountability for them. So there's tons of coaches out there that would love to take your money and teach you a strategy that they can't prove works or not. Okay, so that's number five. Number six, this is a worldview thing, okay? So why would I pay for coaching when I can get the information for free? This is so massive. Should have put this one first, probably. There's something called the endowment effect and loss aversion. This is what I think people are missing. In in in, in plain English, without getting too scientific for you, we value what we pay for, and we place little value on what we get for free. And let me explain. This is what people are missing. There is great value in investing in yourself for your own results. And I'm going to prove it to you. So we test everything. I am not interested in what people think and like how they feel. Show me the data. That is how I make business decisions or life decisions based on facts, not feelings. So we tested this. This is going to be, hopefully you're going to have a huge aha moment. When we gave our products and service, or our product services courses to real estate agents on this channel during a giveaway time, and I'll do a couple of those every year, we track all of their progress. When I gave things away for free, it was rare the person even logged in to the training. They didn't even log in. However, watch, because people are like, well, why should I pay for this? I get, I get it for free. Yeah, watch. The people, the same people that paid into the online course that I offer, they aver averaged, okay? There's been over 4,000 agents to go through my Listing Agent Academy course, not coaching, course. Those people on average, okay, some got more, some got less, got two listings a month. They had the same information than the people that got it for free. And the people that got it for free, when we track their progress, of the ones that actually logged in, which 50%, this is what the data showed, because we can log it, we, we do our online courses in Thinkific and Kajabi, and we can log it and, and track it, 50% didn't log in. Not one time, gave it to them for free, here you go. Of the 50% that logged in, they still haven't gotten a listing when we followed up with them, why? Because information without implementation has literally zero value. And I'll prove it to you yet again. If information was the thing that was the reason 
that kept people from succeeding, wouldn't it be reasonable to believe that as you're watching this video that we're all fit, rich, and happy? Think about this. All the information, you are right, is out there for free. Yet, it's very rare to find somebody that has world-class results. How can that be? For the person who has the worldview and says, why would I invest in myself or hire a coach when I could just get all this for free? You do have it for free and you're not succeeding at the level you have. So what's the missing link? We value what we pay for based on studies. If you're human, you can't fight this. We value what we pay for and we place no value in what we get for free because what you get for free Rarely do you actually, listen close, pay attention to. We pay attention to what we pay for because of the endowment effect and the loss aversion. Okay, You cannot fight human psychology if you're human. So when somebody gets into coaching and they actually invest in themselves, most most people with a scarcity mindset says, oh, I don't want to pay for coaching. That's just a huge expense. The, the other person who says, no, I need to invest in myself so that I pay attention to what I pay for, number one. Number two, it's the accountability of the information that actually gets me the results anyways, because you're exactly right. You can get all the information that you want. And why is it then, if you have so much, uh, if you place value and in information so much, why are you not succeeding at the level that you want? That'd be my question for you. So next, number seven, not an expert, and don't study the market. So I can't be your coach if you just aren't willing to actually be the expert, not just talk, right? I, I When I coach an agent, when, when we show up at a listing appointment, we know the stats, we know the market, and I can't work with an agent who just fakes it. I need somebody to pay attention to what is happening in their market who has time blocked out in their calendar every month to study. Because here's the thing, like as soon as we get out of like traditional school, all of our studying habits just go away for some reason. We stop learning for some reason. We stop uh, the value in coaching, education, and studying and becoming an actual expert. So there's a lot of coaches out there that won't uh, help you actually become an expert. And I'm talking about an actual expert. I'm talking about knowing exactly what your absorption rate is on a daily basis. I know uh, I'm talking about you knowing exactly what the inventory looks like in your market on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. I'm talking about the type of properties with the type of uh, features and amenities that pull more from a value standpoint than properties that don't have these things. I'm talking about a real expert who can present to a seller in a way and be the obvious choice. So next, number eight, can't focus and lacks discipline. And I put this last for a reason. If you're still here, we're, we're, we're on the same page, but here's the key thing. Most people, and I look at this in my YouTube analytics, most people only watch like 20, 30% of this video, which tells me right there, you don't have enough discipline or focus to even watch a full video, let alone prospect for two, three hours a day and master repetitious boredom. You got no chance to succeed at the level that I think you want to. So I cannot coach somebody who just can't focus and doesn't understand that discipline is the missing link to where they are today and where they want to go. And those two things in combination are the things that really will move the needle in your life, let alone your real estate business. So is this video a little, I don't know, uh, different? Yeah, it is. But I wanted, it, I wanted to be clear with you guys on this channel what I believe in and what I don't believe in and what my values are so you can decide for yourself. Either way, I'm fine with it. If these values align with you, and if they do, phenomenal. I will serve you as your coach at the highest level. Like, I got your back 100%. If these values are out of alignment and we are not in a philosophic, uh, philosophical alignment, that's okay too. That is why I made this video so you know if I'm the type of person that you would want to work with or not. 
right? I'm not for everybody. So um, hopefully it helps. Hopefully that was the goal and hopefully that's accomplished. So if there's any clarity I can give you, just put your question in the comments. And if you're the type of person who has these same values and wants to have a conversation about potentially working together and what real accountability looks like, I am absolutely happy to have a conversation with you. So there's a link right underneath this video and it's the pin comment. That's the first comment underneath this video. There's a link there. Feel free to click on that. We can schedule some time to have a conversation and determine if now is the right time to work together. So I'll see you guys in another video. I just, I had this on the top of my mind. I wanted to share my thoughts with you to see if our values align or not uh, so that we can continue on this journey together. So I'll see you guys in another video. I do appreciate your time and your attention today.